Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm gonna make another requested prop. It's the Tesseract from darn near all the Marvel movies. The Tesseract is a cube about four inches on each side, and this baseball display case is nearly perfect. After fumbling to get it open, I measure the inside, and it's 3.8 inches wide, or 97 millimeters for all of you civilized people in the world. But the numbers don't really matter because I can lock the calipers and keep that size for later. What I want to do is cover the inside of the cube with something. What I want to line it with is a product called Illusion Film. As far as I know, Tap Plastics is the only place that has it. And this stuff's been around for a while. I like the kind of an odd 3D effect it gives and the fact that it's translucent. It comes in a variety of colors, including clear. And I think this got used a lot on the original series Star Trek set. I can use the calipers to mark the size of the inside of the cube and then cut that out of a strip of film. Then I mark it again by lightly pressing the points, and this time I can lightly score the film, which means to make more of a scratch on the top of the film, not cutting all the way through it. And if I carefully bend it along the scratch, it makes a nice right angle bend. I make a second set of marks, add another scratch, bend it as well, and make a third set of marks, and this time I cut the film. And now I have a piece of blue film that fits inside of one half of the cube. Now, I did do this measurement by hand, so if one side's a little long, I can just trim it back to fit. Because what I want is as perfect of a fit as I can get. Too big and the film will buckle on the inside, and too short, there'll be gaps in the corners. I start a second strip for the other side. The hard thing is remembering to do a light cut to make these scores and not just cut all the way through the plastic. like that, because that's not what I wanted to have happen. Might have to cut a new, yeah, I'm gonna wanna cut a new one. Dang it. So I cut out another strip, and I get the folds right this time. I place the film in each half of the cube and test the fit. There's no way to glue it in that I'm aware of that won't show. I was trying to experiment with that a little bit. Like tape shows when it's taped on here, and glue shows when you put drops of glue on it. So I'm pretty sure I have to cut some plastic to put on the inside to hold things together. But I'm gonna need a piece of plastic on the inside anyway to hold the light in the center. But before I place the light inside, let me tell you about this episode's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. This is a brand new collection RPG game that is already a mega hit, a phenomenon, and a blockbuster. But don't just take it from me. Raid has over 300,000 reviews with a nearly perfect score in the Play Store. More than 10 million players worldwide enjoyed this game in less than six months. Now, what does Raid offer? Well, you can enjoy a fully voiced story campaign, you can claim glory in the PvP arena, and there's over 400 champions. I mean, check out the details on these champions. The game itself is growing super fast. Check out this cool roadmap that they've just published. There's a new faction, a tag team arena feature, and even a new clan boss. You'll be able to fight with your clan mates. They actually have huge plans for updates in the game, and it's gonna take more than six months to roll out. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description and click on my special link for new players. You'll get 100,000 silver, one energy refill, a one day XP boost, and a free champion, the Executioner. I mean, look at this badass champion that they're gonna give you for free. And all this treasure will be waiting for you right here. But hurry up, the rewards are only good for 30 days. I want my light to be in the center of the cube like it is in the movie. I'll make a plastic holder for it using some acrylic plastic. I think this stuff is 1 16th of an inch thick, and it's acrylic, or plexiglass, or lucite. This, it's got a lot of different names. I can cut it on a saw, but it's easy enough to cut it a few times using a ruler and a knife, and then snap it the rest of the way. After making both pieces, I get worried that they're not gonna be thick enough to catch the illusion film and hold it in the corners of the cube. So I cut another set from some eighth inch thick stuff. Then I can cut this the same way, but it takes more passes with a razor knife. So the thicker ones will probably hold the film better than the thinner ones. They're only a little bit harder to cut. And the protective film comes off. I need a little piece to go in between them as a place to attach the lights. I'll measure it again and cut down a thin strip. 
Of course, they sell the proper tool to cut acrylic with. I'm just forcing it with a razor knife, but you can actually get a proper scribe where you do this and it works a bit faster and easier. I don't have one. Clothespins will hold the acrylic in place, and then I can glue the centerpiece. I'm gonna use some Weld On 4 plastic cement. Now, be careful when applying glue, because a single drop can ruin the 3D effect on the illusion film. So this here, which you can kind of see, probably, that's a single drop of glue. And that's why I can't glue it inside, because it ruins the illusion film effect. I'll just move that piece to the bottom next to the Sports Cubes label. So when you're holding it, you won't see it. So to light up the inside of the cube, I'm gonna go ahead and use some cheap little $1 flashlights. I'll take these apart and just put the elements inside. You could use other things like uh, LED fa uh, fairy lights and things like that if you wanted to. I just want this because it's going to be the brightest, which is what I'm after. To disassemble these, unscrew the end, remove the clear lens. I just poke it with a small screwdriver and pry it out, and then push the LEDs out from the inside. I double check that the spring is the positive side. I remove and replace the flashlight connections with Cat5 wire. Just keep the colors consistent for each part. I like to use solid for the positive. To stick the LEDs to the plastic, I use some double stick foam tape and then solder the wires together. I place shrink tubing over all the exposed soldered connections because I've had too many props get an electrical short right when I need them and couldn't fix them. I drill a hole in the box because I want to keep the power source outside of the cube. What I'm using is called a unibit. This is actually really good for drilling into acrylic. Wood drill bits are a little trickier because they'll catch the acrylic and cause a crack. If you get a crack, it's all over. You can't stop it. Sure, my finger's out of the way. Then if you use a little bit of heat, you can burn the edges of the hole and that'll prevent any micro cracks you can't see from forming later. And I melted it. That's okay. I could always just put the batteries on the inside bottom. The cube will always have to sit on something, my hand or the table, but I have future plans for this one and I want the power to be external. But the Illusion Film does a decent job of distributing the light. One thing I might try is actually put some batting in here, some of the, uh, the, the, the polyfill, like what's in stuffies. If I put that in here, it might diffuse the light a little better. So I'll give that a shot. I put just a little bit of fluff into the cube. The goal is to diffuse the light, not cram it full of stuff. The polyfill is translucent. What it's gonna do is diffuse the light and help wrap it around the sides of the LEDs and spread it out evenly on all six sides of the cube. That diffuses the light a lot more and I can see it from all sides. Now I still get a bit of a shadow from the one plastic wall. Eh, this may not be the best plan, but I thought it would work. <laughs> but I'm getting a really strong front and back. It's okay on the top. It's hiding the light better on the sides. So I'm a lot, actually I'm a lot happier with that. It's diffusing it a lot more. So what I wanna do is improve this. The AA, the AAA batteries will work, obviously, but I'm running two flashlights. I'm gonna swap this out for C-cell batteries because it'll be a lot larger. They'll probably last all day that way. And the nice thing is AAA batteries and C-cell batteries are the same voltage, so I'm not gonna overfeed the LEDs and kill them. So the reason I'm adding this extra bit of wire is that the battery pack holds four batteries, but the LEDs only need three. And if I plug in four, I run the risk of overpowering the LEDs and burning them out. So by putting in a jumper wire, I can put in three C-cells and they'll be happy. I add a J connector between the batteries and the light with more shrink tube to protect the solder points. Using a J connector, I can add more wire later if I need the batteries to be farther away. Now I didn't put a power switch in here because the Tesseract is a power source, right? If you're gonna hold this thing, it's gonna be glowing all day anyway, right? So it doesn't need to have an on-off switch necessarily, just pull a battery out. And I was trying to keep it simple. So the idea here is now, especially as any long sleeve character, you could run the wire up a sleeve, set this into a pocket or a pouch or in, inside of your vest, and you've got a glowing test rack that you can carry around all day. I've actually seen a few of these done and it looks really good when you do that. Now I didn't glue this guy together and that was intentional because I have plans. 
The Tesseract belongs in something. And I'm gonna be doing that to it next. And it'll be coming out in a few weeks. But for now, I'm gonna leave it unglued just in the baseball case because this is how Odin makes. I want to thank Eric Gordon, Darren Albright, and all of my Patreon subscribers. You guys really do keep this channel going. If you like this channel, don't forget to subscribe. Do you have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.